On, on the number of um, borough-wide Section 60 searches, can we have the figure for the number to date out of the 113? Because I've got, I've got figures from an MQ date to May, and then we know that there's 20 and quarter two, but that doesn't tell us how many of the, the total so no, far this year. I think I do have this in my <laughs> enormous pack, but I may not put my hand on it straight away, Sean. Can you get it um, to us before the I end of the meeting? I will Is do my <laughs> level best to do that. <laughs> Thank you And very secondly, much. very happy to write after if I don't. OK. Um, so uh, one of the follow-up questions I wanted to ask um, was about um, people knowing what their rights are and knowing that they, there is a Section 60 in place. Because I know that, that many sort of organisations supporting young people, supporting different groups in London, make people aware of their rights, the questions they can sure. ask when they're sure. stopped. Sure. Um, and people who don't realise what the sort of difference is in mm. Section 60 um, may find that quite confusing. Um, mm. They might not get the answers they need. Um, they, they may feel it creates more tensions if when asking about their rights as they see them, they get the answer, well, sorry, we got rid of those and you didn't know about it because there wasn't any communication. So what are you doing to sort of improve the, the communication about this, the training of officers to deal with, with those kinds of issues which we, hear, we are hearing about? Mm. I think this is a very important issue. It's a, it's a continuous one. Um, I have said to my teams that as we increase our enforcement operations in all ways, we must be communicating and explaining ourselves you know, better and better all the time. This is something, though, that is not just for the police to do. And in, in many of our schools, uh, young people are given uh, really good explanations of both Section 1 and Section 60. There are a number of documents available for people. As you say, many, many youth organisations also are involved in this. I would love more of our young people to have a better understanding even than, than they do now of their rights and uh, there's a whole series of different ways that that can be done but I don't think it's, it, is, it is just for us but my officers are very aware that section 60 is different from section 1 and they will talk, talk to the young person about it. Do, do you mean there are school materials provided by the police about oh, this? Yes, we have. We, have we could have to, yeah, copies of to see how it, how yeah. it works. And also, of course, for example, you know, our officers who work with cadets, our officers who are in the schools, our officers who are in the people referral units, this is a key part of their role, is, is to make sure that young people are um, educated, for want of a better word, about mm. their rights. And um, so when it comes to communicating with the local community, mm -hmm. um, are you, how are you making improvements on that? Because I'm still struggling to find um, when, for instance, I've been informed as a local councillor, but that's not the only instance I'm thinking about. I look on Twitter, I, I sometimes see Section 60s being announced right. on Twitter, sometimes not, sometimes there are press releases, sometimes there are not. There, there don't seem to be a consistent way of communicating mm -hmm. when there is one, um, or a place where you could go and check. If an officer's told you there's a Section 60, how can you go and verify that, for example? Mm -hmm. Well, I... Again, a challenge, as you say, not just with, with um, uh, Section 60, but also with other things, informing stakeholders, making it clear to the public what is going on. I do think Twitter is a primary route for us, mm -hmm. and I would be surprised if the vast majority of our Section 60s aren't actually on Twitter, if, if you look now. Um, we'll certainly have a look at that. I think that is good practice. <coughs> what it won't necessarily be able to say is, you know, the precise roads uh, and that kind of thing that is covered, because that is not practical. Um, but the fact that, you know, we are concerned about gang tensions in this, in Shoreditch, mm -hmm. hypothetically, and we ha now have a Section 60 and it will last for X hours, is something we would want people mm -hmm. to know about. Yeah. And, and, you know, if, an, if there's been an incident, we always try to put out there, there will be, <coughs> you know, extra officers on patrol, they'll be doing this, that and the other, and there is a Section 60 in force. Um, and are you, are you getting any complaints about it? Um, and would you be able to tell us? Uh, how many complaints there have been of people um, who maybe been searched, been told, asked the, asked the questions, been told the Section 60, and then complained about either their treatment or, or being unaware of this before it happened? I'd, I'd have to ask a further question of my teams as to which which of the, as I say, much lower numbers of complaints than there used to be yeah. relate to um, searches that have been done under Section 60. Uh, I, would really I like can to do that. I, that. I would have to say because we do have you know, a reasonable proportion now, um, it may not be <laughs> that, that are under Section 60. It may not be the fact that it was a Section 60 that has caused the complaint. Mm -hmm. exactly. It may just be that there's been a miscommunication between the two parties <coughs> and, and the person who's been searched has then reacted badly and, and complained afterwards. Often this is resolved very quickly when we watch the body-worn video. Mm -hmm. There might be learning for, for, for both of us um, or for one party or the other. 
Uh, but it might be very hard for me to say the complaint was because there was a Section 60, because a search is a search is a search. You understand that. I mean, if you can just give us what you can, that would Thank be you. really useful. I know there yeah, are, there, there's an emerging few press reports about this. There aren't a huge number, but I've seen some. You can write, get our some to write to us in we'll, due course. We will do our yeah. best, yeah. certainly, yeah. Chair. I, just, do you I want understand. To, sorry, Sean, do you want to yeah. ask can me a question? Move on, I do have one more, one more question. Um, yeah. In terms of changing yeah. the... Um, the, the threshold of Section 60, which is the question we were asking mm. before, and so the, the threshold of stop and search in general, um, can you outline some of the, the, the risks there might be to that, <coughs> to, to doing that, to reducing the threshold for stop and search? Yeah, I think that was you all sort of did that on, on the safeguarding side of things, but not... So safeguarding, I'm hoping that won't come in, because as, as I said, I think it will be very unclear for officers, and I don't think it will, but it has been debated. And indeed, the Deputy Chief Constable in the article that Steve was talking about was talking about that as a possibility. Um, another possibility is that you, having specifically said in the law, previous convictions do not amount to reasonable grounds, I wonder whether people might take the view, but this is obviously a matter for government uh, and, and the judiciary, that actually <coughs> um, two recent previous convictions for carrying a knife might amount to uh, reasonable grounds. People will, ha people will have a view about that. I am very confident, as I say, that my officers are very professional. They work within the law. They know what they're doing. And if we can uh, allow them to be confident and competent with less bureaucracy or <coughs> sort of slightly greater ease to do the work, the job they want to do, the job they're out on the streets to do, that they know will have a good beneficial effect. I haven't talked about the crime figures, but is having a <coughs> beneficial effect on the crime figures then I would be in favour of that. Of course, as I've made clear in my answer about you know, any suggestion that we don't need reasonable grounds in general terms, I, th I think is, is, is not suitable for our city in 2018. The, the, so the risk that you are referring to, I have no doubt, is that um, you know, we have to, uh, people in our communities would feel that that could, be, could result in overuse or unfair use even when it didn't, it might feel like that, and that could really damage community relations, potentially. I think we've got that. So. Abishon, right. I think we've got two more brief questions on this subject before we move on to...